Hello and welcome to Tech Report, this is INET Online. Coming up on this episode, we'll have all you need to know about Windows 10. I'll walk you through the upgrade procedure that I needed to go through on my PC to get everything working just right, and I'll give you a rundown of all the latest and greatest in the operating system. On July 29, 2015, Microsoft released the latest iteration of their flagship Windows operating system. Dubbed Windows 10, the release was significant for two main reasons. Firstly, it was the first release of Microsoft Windows since the gaffe that was Windows 8, in which Microsoft alienated a large uh, percentage of their user base by uh, focusing on touchscreen interface rather than the desktop environment. But it is also significant because this is the Microsoft has announced this is the last major release of Microsoft Windows they are ever going to produce. It marks a huge departure from the traditional software release cycle that Microsoft has followed for the past several decades, and it marks the start of what many are assuming is going to be Windows as a service. But more on that in the coming months, I'm sure. Let's instead take a look at Windows 10 and focus on some of the main features of this brand new operating system. And I first want to speak about the upgrade process from Windows 7 or Windows 8 to Windows 10, because if you want to take advantage of your free license, then it is something that every one of you is going to have to go through. Um, in a nutshell, Microsoft has announced that you can upgrade any existing installation of Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 directly to Windows 10 for free. The only caveat is that you have to perform an in-place upgrade, something that many of you who are experienced with botched Windows version upgrades are probably dreading. The good news is that once you perform that in-place upgrade, you can then go back and do a clean installation of Windows 10 on the same PC and activate it all without entering a product key. The only catch is you do have to get that first in-place upgrade accomplished. And that's something I want to touch on. Before upgrading to Windows 10, my PC was running Windows 8.1 64-bit, uh, an upgrade path that should be easily supported. So on July 29th, with all of this in mind, I went ahead and downloaded Windows 10 and went to perform the in-place upgrade. Well, not surprisingly, it failed, crashing around 26% after the first reboot. Not to be deterred, I then pulled out my installation USB drive and installed a clean version of Windows 7, Service Pack 1, which I then tried to upgrade to Windows 10. That failed as well, hitting a blue screen of death after the installation completed. So my third attempt centered around installing a clean copy of Windows 8.1 and then upgrading that to Windows 10. Well, unfortunately that also failed around the 26% uh, installation mark after the first re reboot. The final thing I tried uh, was attempt number four, which was doing a clean installation of Windows 8 and then doing an in-place upgrade to Windows 10, and that actually succeeded, even though technically that's not an upgrade path that's supported. Now it is worth noting that all of this trouble uh, I experienced was only on one of three systems that I upgraded. My Asus tablet and my Lenovo laptop both upgraded from their previous versions of Windows to Windows 10 without issue. But it does go to show that there is no such thing as a Windows version upgrade that, do that comes without a hitch. And I really wish Microsoft would just offer a direct license conversion from Windows 7 or Windows 8 to Windows 10 so that you can perform a clean installation without all the bullshit. Now though, that all my devices are running Windows 10, let's dive into this new operating system and see what it's all about. The biggest news that people have been focusing on surrounding Windows 10 is the reintroduction of the Start Menu. Microsoft upset a lot of PC users when they dropped the Start Menu in favor of the Start Screen in Windows 8. And the Start Menu's reintroduction in Windows 10 shows that Microsoft is actually listening to their user base. The new Start Menu features some the new start menu features what some are calling the best of both worlds, the so-called live tiles on the right-hand side, and a more traditional listing of programs and files on the left. The one killer feature being that the menu can be customized as you want. You can make it uh, as wide as you want or as narrow as you want, and you can choose to turn off and even hide the live tiles should you desire. No longer are we forced to accept Microsoft's narrow view of what a PC operating system should look like. One of the other major anticipated features of Windows 10 was the introduction of a brand new lightweight web browser dubbed Microsoft Edge. Edge is Microsoft's attempt to win back market share by completely rethinking their web browser from the ground up. 
This is not IE12 by any stretch of the imagination. It is something completely new, although Internet Explorer is still available in the OS for compatibility reasons. Edge seems like a fairly decent web browser. It's reasonably fast and allowed me to download Mozilla Firefox without much trouble. All kidding aside though, I think Edge is actually pretty good, and I would definitely put it on par with other system default OSs such as Apple's Safari and iOS, or the browser built into Google Android. And on a tablet, I might actually see myself using it, but for desktop, view, desktop use, I'm going to stick with my tried and true Firefox for maximum reliability and compatibility. Edge is also missing some major features, like the ability to synchronize open tabs and bookmarks across multiple devices, and the ability to support third-party add-ons. Looking at the Windows 10 taskbar, you will notice there are a couple of new icons alongside the familiar start button. The first icon is for Microsoft Cortana and Windows Search. Cortana is a virtual assistant for Windows that is similar to Siri on iOS or Google Now on Android devices. You can use it to set reminders or search for items using voice control, and a lot of people seem to be really excited about it. Just not me. I use the button to disable Microsoft Cortana so I can go back to using my PC without it trying to talk to me. Uh, the search button is also the gateway to the more familiar Windows search functionality, where you can search for files and programs on your computer by simply starting to type the name. Uh, it'll also by default do an online search, but you can disable that if you don't like the slow results or you're on a metered internet connection. Of course, you can also purge the button from your taskbar entirely for more taskbar work real estate, should you desire. The second new button in the taskbar is the so-called task view button, and it's something that is extremely useful if you're one of the people that likes to have a lot of windows open. Uh, click the button and you'll see a thumbnail version of all your open programs uh, appear before you, making locating that lost Steam chat window a breeze. Task list can also be activated by pressing the windows key and the tab key on your keyboard. Another major addition to the Windows operating system is something that Linux and OS X users have been familiar with for a number of years, virtual desktops. Virtual desktops were first introduced to the mainstream back in 2004 when it was implemented in the Ubuntu Linux operating system, who here remembers the Ubuntu Cube, and then were introduced to Apple's Mac OS X in 2007 with the release of uh, OS X 10.5. And now finally, Windows users can jump on the virtual desktops bandwagon. Uh, in Windows 10, virtual desktops are accessed by using the task list view. Simply click on the new desktop button in the lower right corner and you can drag open programs to the new desktop. Virtual desktops are particularly useful if you have only one screen because you can logically organize your running programs and quickly switch between them. Uh, in my case, however, with three monitors, I have not found a very good use case for them because I usually organize my open windows uh, on a per screen basis. But it's good to have the feature there uh, should I need to use it in the future or should I need to use it on something like a laptop where I only have one monitor available. Of course, like many of the other aspects of Windows 10, you can disable it and remove the icon from your taskbar for once again more real estate. One major improvement to Windows 10 that has been overlooked by much of the mainstream media is an overhauled version of the Microsoft Windows command prompt. Uh, developers, systems administrators, and power users are likely familiar with the painful procedure that was copying text from a command prompt in previous versions of Windows. With Windows 10, however, that has all changed. Now you can select text in your command window simply by clicking and dragging, and you can even select multiple lines. To copy the text to your clipboard, simply right click, and you can even maximize your command prompt window to fill the entire screen instead of just about half of your screen without messing around with columns and rows and all that nasty bullshit. While it may seem like a small tweak to the operating system as a whole, the overhauled command prompt window is actually going to improve my workflow immensely. Windows 10 has also redefined the way notifications are delivered to your device. Uh, gone are the days of program notifications appearing as a bubble in the taskbar. Now they appear as a momentarily, momentary, easy to read on-screen box in the lower right corner. The new notification system aggregates all notifications from programs and system, and system notifications alike and allows you to access an historical listing by clicking on the notification center icon in your taskbar. Notifications also stay on the lower right corner of your screen, regardless of where your taskbar is on screen, 
which is something that really irked me about Windows 8, uh, because as I have my taskbar on the top of my screen, the notifications seem to follow the taskbar around and would often materialize right in the upper left, hand, or correction, upper right hand corner, right above the close, minimize, and maximize buttons on whatever window I was working on. Microsoft has done a great job of unifying the settings application in Windows 10. Back in the Windows 8 days, system settings was a schizophrenic mess of some settings being available in the modern UI, with still others being available in the old control panel. With Windows 10, everything is centered around the new settings application. While there are still a few settings that are accessed through the old control panel, there is a corresponding link to that control panel in the modern settings app. Uh, which automatically opens the appropriate control panel when you click it. So no more frantically trying to remember what place you went where to access what setting. Windows Explorer has also been tweaked slightly. Uh, the default Explorer window that appears when you open it up is called Quick Access, and it contains the fairly standard links to downloads, documents, videos, and the like that everyone is used to. But it also allows you to pin additional drives and folders for easy access. Below the quick access area, you'll see a list of your recent files that you've been opened, so you spend less time scrambling around in my computer to find that document that you were last working on. Another marked improvement of Windows 8 is the fact that you can now easily launch multiple instances of programs. Back in the Windows 8 days, if you wanted to launch two instances of PuTTY or Remote Desktop or some other desktop application, you would have to push and hold the Shift key while pressing Enter to open a second instance. That requirement is now gone, and you can happily open as many program instances as your RAM and resource limits will allow. Of course, now I have to retrain myself to not press Shift Enter when opening programs, which is actually kind of difficult because I've developed muscle memory to do just that. And finally, I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to mention the overhauled Windows updates. Microsoft will finally allow you to schedule the restart of your system so that you don't get interrupted with a system reboot in the middle of an important job. Also of note, updating will be mandatory on the home versions of Windows 10, something that might make a few folks leery. Fortunately, you can disable automatic updating if you're using the professional version of Windows 10. Now, with all the good features and improvements in Windows 10, there are a few disadvantages and setbacks. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Windows updating will be mandatory on the home version, which seems like a good idea initially. You get all the latest security patches and the like, but I mean, who hasn't had a botched Windows update that's broken more than it's fixed? Another huge disadvantage is the so-called feature called Wi-Fi Sense. Wi-Fi Sense will automatically connect you to open Wi-Fi hotspots, something that's bad enough on its own, but it also allows you to share your Wi-Fi network with all of your contacts, something that in my opinion could be a huge security vulnerability. While the feature to share your network at home is disabled by default, there's nothing to stop a friend or relative you've given access credentials to helpfully hitting the share option on their computer and spreading access to your Wi-Fi network through all their Outlook and Skype contacts. Of course, I mean, there's nothing really stopping them from emailing your password around if they have that, but it's far more likely that a non-tech savvy friend or relative is going to think they're doing something useful by clicking the share button built into Windows 10 than they would be to email their password, email your password around. I would recommend using a guest wireless network that limits access to any of your internal network resources and only allows internet access to prevent this from becoming a problem. And finally, there does seem to be a few issues with the search functionality in Windows 10. Uh, in Windows 8, I can search through all my files and programs uh, simply by starting to type into the start screen. However, in Windows 10, it, the search feature seems to be limited to searching for programs. Uh, typing the name of a few files in my downloads directory does not yield any results. Now, of course, this isn't a deal breaker, but this functionality would be awesome and would improve my workflow significantly. Now, of course, there are a few other features of Windows 10 that I'm missing out on, most notably the Continuum feature that is especially useful on tablet PCs. I just simply don't have time in this video to go through all of those features. However, I do plan on creating another Windows 10 video in the coming weeks focusing on how it operates on my tablet PC, so stay tuned for that. In conclusion, however, Windows 10 is a brand new operating system that solves most of the problems introduced by its predecessor, Windows 8. 
It has a brand new lightweight web browser, a reintroduction of the start menu, and a whole host of new and improved features that makes using the operating system a delight. And as long as you can get your PC to actually upgrade to Windows 10 without problem, and you can get over the security concerns of Wi-Fi Sense and the search limitations, then performing the Windows 10 upgrade for free is definitely a worthwhile endeavor. For Tech Report, this is Christopher reporting.